What's up everybody, I'm Jesse Showalter and today we're going to talk about the first stage of the web or product design process and that is wireframing. The purpose of wireframing is to figure out and plan for the structure and the flow and the designing of the content really of the website or the product. I always find it really useful to start with pen and paper. I know some people will start directly in the computer or in a design program, but I like to start with a blank piece of paper and a marker, or a lot of times I'm out and about and I have like a booklet and a pen. The reason I start with paper and pen of some sort is because I don't want to get too focused on the tool. I don't want to get too focused on aligning things and making things look good on the screen. I just want to be able to, to kind of sketch really messy and really dirty and get the ideas out. I find that when I do that, I have more ideas because I'm not focusing on a singular idea for longer. I want to know what the content is before I get started or at least have some sort of rough idea. Here's some of the key elements of content you'll need to know to get started with a wireframe. You want to know the amount of content. Is it a lot? Is it a little? Is there going to be essays and paragraphs and blog posts? Or, or are you working on a project or with a client that has very little to say? Is it going to be mainly photos or videos? Start identifying the amount of content that's actually going to go on each page. Number two, identify the type of content. Is it text? Is it photos? Is it videos? Is it a lot of lists and links? And so you want to figure out the type. Maybe you are working for an e-commerce uh, client and the site that you're building is going to be mainly photos of the products with small descriptions. Or maybe you are building a blog for a friend and it's going to be nothing but content and heavy amounts of written content. Then you're going to want to plan accordingly for those. Next, you want to design for the users that this design is going to serve. If you're going to be designing something for an older demographic, you're probably going to want to focus on larger imagery and larger typography so that it's easier for them to read. If you're designing an interface for uh, a bus or public transit, you're going to want to make sure that you don't have any sort of fat thumbs issues where you're creating really small touch points and interaction points. So be thinking about the users that you're actually designing this for. Lastly, it's really important that you think of the handoff situation. Who are you giving this design to? If you're handing this off to a client who's never ever going to blog but, but they're saying they're going to, you might want to take in consideration what your design looks like in the wireframe process with very little text. So be taking into account who it is you're passing this off to. Is it hard for them to get photography? Is it hard for them to, to uh, I generate ideas to put down in a blog? then you might want to sway the design one way or another based on those considerations. Once I have all of that kind of in mind, I like to start writing um, my ideas just kind of in a little legend down the side of my paper before I start working. Once I have the requirements down on the page, I want to start creating uh, at least eight to ten different thumbnail sketches of ideas um, and, and I want to let my imagination start flowing. I want to let my creativity start flowing. By doing them as quickly as possible, you allow yourself to try variety, you allow yourself to try layouts and try to find solutions to the problem that maybe you wouldn't thought of before. Also you want to really try to limit yourself from doing small variations of the same design over and over. You want to try to do large changes, completely different ideas once you get your pen to the paper. So now that we have our designs sketched messy on paper, there's a few things we need to do before we put them into the computer and start making high res mockups. Uh, number one, I probably want to go through and just kind of start checking off some things that I like and didn't like. So I would take, um, you know, maybe I like this one and I'm crossing out different variations. And the cool thing is there might be certain things that you like about some pieces of your designs and not of others. So I might actually use this portion and mix and match my designs um, dependent on the constraints of the project. So that's actually going to kind of help me drill down and distill down the thoughts and ideas I have. 
Quick tip, as you are wireframing, it's important for you to come up with your own personal wireframing or design sketching kind of language. Like you'll notice for me, uh, if I'm gonna do a photo, I do a box with an X through it and that represents some sort of photo element. Um, or if I do a header, I do kind of like these open boxes. If you're interested on my technique of design or wireframe sketching, you can click this link up here or down in the description. I'm gonna have a whole video on that. Um, but it's important for you to kind of come up with your own language. As long as it makes sense to you, um, that's all that matters. You're gonna be explaining these wireframes to whoever you present them to anyway, so be confident in that. And then what I would do is take these ideas and I would actually put them into the computer uh, and I would start kind of creating gray boxes um, and simple kind of like Helvetica text, gray boxes. That way, if I show those kind of high res wireframes to a client, um, they're not looking at color or typography or photo selection. They're just looking at structure and we can then have a good conversation about content. At this stage in the process, after I've created it in the computer, um, I do the majority of my wireframing in Sketch because it's really easy to just build out the project from there. Um, I like to actually just sleep on it for a couple days, whether it's a personal project or a client project, I like to just kind of get away from it, um, take a breather, work on other things, and come back to it, and, and kind of look at my original ideas mixed with what I have on the screen, and decide if I need to do a round two, if I need to iterate something that's there, or if I can just choose something that I like and move on. And so it's always good to get perspective and a little bit of clarity on your designs before you sign off on them or have them signed off on. I really hope that this video about wireframing was helpful to you. If you've never wireframed at all, I encourage you just to dive in. It has greatly increased my productivity and it's really increased my creativity within the design process itself. So um, I hope you enjoyed any of the techniques and tips that I've given today. If you have some sort of technique or tip that you do when you wireframe or that you really love, please leave those down in the comments. I'm always looking for ways to improve my personal workflow as well. So uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you did enjoy it, make sure to hit the little thumbs up and maybe even subscribe to the channel so you see more design related videos when they come out. Hope you guys are designing amazing things hope you are making amazing things and I hope that you are really thinking about the right solutions to the problems I'll talk to you guys next time